Hello YouTube, I'm back at it again. Um, as much as I hate top five videos, these are, uh, this is not top, these are not t the top five ambergris fragrances, but these are some pretty good ambergris fragrances. I think so at least. I have two honorable mentions, one that does not have the ambergris in the notes list, but I think it does, I think it has an ambergris feeling about it. Now, sometimes the feeling of a fragrance is is just is just as good as having the actual notes in there. And the other honorable mention is discontinued. I guess you could say um, you can still find some bottles of this. It's hard to find the original, and I have the original. Uh, but ambergris is. Really, you read different things in ambergris, and, you're, and sometimes I'm really not sure if anyone actually knows what it is. Uh, some people will call it, uh, comes from the, the whale's poop. Some people say that ambergris is the vomit of a whale. Some people say that it's the sperm of a whale. But regardless of what it actually is, it smells pretty darn good, and I like the way it, it um, can add a vibrant i guess you could say a vibrant feel to a fragrance it can add texture it can add depth it can add longevity it can add performance it can have a salty smell it can have a musky smell it can have a musky salty smell it can be quite animalic um, it can be a supporting note or it can be a main player in a fragrance i mean ambergris is, is just as versatile as oud and i think i prefer ambergris in fragrances to be honest with you so Nonetheless, <clears throat> let's get to the one that does not have ambergris in it, but I think I smell something that reminds me of ambergris, and that is La Dolera Squeeze Blaise of Stress. Eugene's fragrance. Yeah, I get something in there. I'm not sure if it's the pink pepper mixing with the musks, Mixing with the castorium and the orris together that's creating some sort of an ambergris note in here. I mean, I, I do, I get something, something that reminds me of ambergris in here, even though it's not listed in the notes. And I'll be doing a review on this. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, I'm not saying they're, 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 saying the wrong things about this fragrance, but I get more of one note in here than I do of the other. Uh, and that'll be in my review. And, and, and respectfully speaking, people saying that this is a rose fragrance, they are correct, but I think this has a lot more of something else in here than it does actually rose. Um, I know it has two roses in it, but I think that there is another note in here that is so much more potent so much more apparent um, and so much more complex than rose. I think that a lot of people are just smelling it off the top and saying, oh, it's a rose fragrance, but it's so much more than a rose fragrance. It's a beautiful fragrance nonetheless. And next we have Crime and Punishment by Insar Oud. Uh, this is the first release. Uh, huh, the little musks, the little sediments in the bottom aren't there anymore. I don't know. This is this right here is is a beautiful, um, musky, raspberry, ambergris fragrance. This has a natural musk in it, has a lot of musk in it, but I think a lot of that muskiness is actually coming from the ambergris. And when you smell this, it's beautiful right off the top. This when I talk about old Insar Oud, old Arige Lador, this is the stuff I'm talking about. Not the stuff that came out that's coming out every week. It seems like that is basically the same fragrance. They're just changing around top notes and stuff like that, adding a little bit more rose, a little bit more musk, taking out the oud, you know, mix, mixing it in. But this is a beautiful fragrance. The ambergris is here. The ambergris is apparent. It's a very gray ambergris. And it really adds some depth to it. This is a wild fragrance. It, all, it smells like a tiger during sex. That's what it smells like to me. Hmm. 
What shall I pick next? Let's go with the elephant in the room. Balenciaga, poor home. Kind of hard to smell this way, but beautiful fragrance. Very classic smell, classic bottle. Um, this was actually, uh, when I bought this, it was brand new in the box. Uh, original release date, and, and I got this at a, at a killer price, honestly. It was on Mercari, and the dude was asking like 130 and then... I offered him the lowest I could go, and then he actually put a lower bid on there, and then I accepted it, and he he got so mad. He thought about taking it off, and, you know, I kind of guilt-tripped the dude into, uh, you know, letting me keep it. But a beautiful fragrance, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. This reminds, or the other one in here kind of reminds me of this. But the aldehydes, the incense, the ambergris, the patchouli, the musks, the castorium, the rose, everything in here, honestly. This this is so much more than just a classic. This is honestly a great fragrance. Let me see if I can tell where the... And it's honestly, man, to the point to where... That this is, I think I've only used this a handful of times, honestly. Uh, I wonder how much is actually in this. Let me see if I can't. Yeah. I think I've, I've probably only used about 3 ml of this, and it's a, is this 100 ml? 50? Yes, yeah, a 50 ml, and I've only used like three, four ml, so doing pretty good on it so far. I was afraid I'd run through this like a like a virgin in a frat house, but nonetheless. Up next, the one that um, kind of reminds me of um, Balenciaga Pour Homme, and this came out after Balenciaga Pour Homme, so um, I can only imagine, well, there is sediments in the bottom of this as well hmm. and this is mon numero 10 from l'artisan perfumer now this right here is this right here is a compliment monster i don't oftentimes talk about compliments but this is a compliment monster i cannot tell you how many times um i've wore this to um college places i'm not gonna say parties i'm not gonna say um girls dorms but i'm not gonna i cannot tell you how many times i have worn this and i have got a compliment every single flipping time honestly you know i could care less about compliments you know i could care less about having the ladies uh have a girlfriend but you know, you, I, could, I could care less, you know, because I have a girlfriend, but I could care less because, you know, I, I don't struggle from, you know, needing anyone else's attention or affection or uh, their sexual desire. But this right here will make them come out of the woodworks, guys. It honestly, man, this is, this is some good stuff. Buttery, smooth, sexy. It, really, it does smell buttery. But at the same time, it has that musky ambergris. And this is a buttery ambergris, I think. It, it, it helps the fragrance go. It helps the fragrance morph. It brings it together. It kind of has that oceanic vibe without being a marine note. But it is salty. It is warm. It is sexy. Now, up next is a fragrance that a lot of people don't know have ambergris in it. And I have no idea how they do not know it has ambergris in it. This is a fragrance that a lot of people don't like. And at first, I could see why, because I ignorantly made a video saying that I would never buy this. But I went to the Louis Vuitton store again after I went. Um, and I smelt of it and smelt of it and I sprayed it on because when I love the smell, but it just didn't last. And a lot of people don't give this the fragrance, don't give this fragrance the credit I think it deserves. And that is Louis Vuitton Les Sable Roses. 
Oh man, right off the top, you get hit with that ambergris. Right off the top, you get hit with that ambergris. And then the rose is in there. I think there's Bulgarian and Turkish rose. Oh man, this stuff is sexy, 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 honestly. If this fragrance, I'm gonna be putting this to use this winter. If I was a single man, I would be wearing this to every bar, every club, any place where there's anyone around me. Not just for their pleasure, but for mine, because I love the way this smells. Um, I know a lot of people say that this reminds them of Noir de Noir, and this doesn't to me. I really don't think this reminds me of Noir de Noir at all. The rose is different. The notes are different. This is a beautiful fragrance. This is a rose ambergris fragrance. They say there's oud in here. I don't get a lot of oud. I don't even get amber woods. I don't, I don't get woodiness to it at all. This is, to me, is a straight up rose and ambergris fragrance. That's, that's what I get, rose and ambergris. And I love every minute of it. Up next, we have a fragrance that is uh, discontinued as well. Uh, so far in this list, we have one, two, three fragrances that are discontinued and one that has been um, severely reformulated. So... You know, I'll, I do mention discontinued fragrances, reformulated fragrances, because if you want it bad enough, you'll go buy it. If you're okay with having a reformulation or a similar fragrance or a clone, then that's up to you. You know, there, there's no shame in that. I understand sometimes you have to get what you have to get because, you know, you can't find the original. So you have to get, you know, a reformulated version or a fragrance that is similar to it. Or, you know, and, so, and some people have even told me that, you know, that don't like clones and don't agree with clones. They have to get the clone because the clone, not the cologne, but the clone, the, the, uh, the inspired version, because they want to smell something that smells like the original so bad. So, you know, if you want it, you'll go get it. So that's all I got to say. And that it, this is Emperor's Court by Dixit and Zach. If I'm not mistaken, um, this is a 100% uh, natural perfume, if I'm not mistaken. I know that uh, some of their stuff is contains synthetics, but it's really just such a small amount in there that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> No, I don't see anything on the back about any synthetic being mentioned. But this right here, this is a manly fragrance. This smells like an emperor's fragrance, honestly. I could imagine an Indian emperor or an emperor of any um, fra of any um, empire in Asia to smell like this. Kind of gives off a, a diesel, diesel fuel vibe, which I have a diesel. I like the smell of diesel. But man, you, you get a, you get a Sheepra feeling in this. And you also get a barbershop perfume smell in this. So you get a, a, a Fougere mixed with a Sheepra, mixed with a, an Oriental. I know a lot of people don't like using the word Oriental. I mean, you know, I'm indifferent about it. It doesn't matter to me. Middle East, not necessarily Middle Eastern, but Indian style. Very subdued, but very strong, very projecting. It really plays that cat and mouse game on whether is it going to project 20 feet or is it going to project 20 centimeters off my skin. Oh, man, beautiful, beautiful. But ambergris, the ambergris is in here and the ambergris is really strong. I get the ambergris from the top to the bottom. From the top to the bottom, I get the ambergris. Really big, really strong fragrance. Believe it or not, this will get me. A, this this has got me a compliment before. I think ambergris is just a note that a lot of people like. Ah, beautiful fragrance. Really beautiful. Manly, masculine, strong. Has some cojones to it. And last but not least, this is a uh, 
a unisex fragrance. This is a sexy unisex fragrance. And there's also a little bit of sediments in this. Uh, let me see if there was any in here. I don't, yeah, I see some. I see some sediments in here. And then I can't really tell in here. Man, that's just a beautiful dark bottle. And this is Eris MXXX, period. I love the smell of this. I love the sound of this right here. It goes, it's like you, you know. So you pull it out of someone's butt. Ah, oh, man, this, this is a, this is a different fragrance. I'm gonna spray this on my skin. And this is a different fragrance. Oh man, this is special. This is special, honestly. I, I, I would be hard pushed if someone told me that this, if someone told me that this was a Chanel exclusive, I would believe them, honestly. Oh man, cacao. Cacao, patchouli, ambergris. I get a rose in here, like a like a stale rose, and and I'm okay with this rose being somewhat stale because there's so much other stuff going on in here. Very vibrant, has that little fuzziness to it, little bubbliness, kind of like how this does, and how this does, kind of sudsy almost. Like when um, the waves come in and they start pulling back, and you can see like you know little foam bubbles. That's kind of what I get. But sexy, honestly, this this stuff is just sexy. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. But honestly, this is a great fragrance. All jokes aside, this is a great fragrance. It's a great house, an underrated house. I gotta have to. Get, I'm gonna have to get some more stuff from it. But I really like it. I think it's worth every penny. And. There we go, that's my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven good ambergris fragrances. So you know, go check some of these out. If you, ha or have, if you already have these, tell me what you think about them. If you have some better ambergris fragrances that you think I could have mentioned, uh, tell them in the comments below. If you think this video absolutely sucked, please give me a thumbs, thumbs down and unsubscribe.